The Dighton Rock, a 40-ton boulder in Massachusetts, USA, is a mysterious relic indeed. Not only does it not fit in with the surrounding environment, but the incredibly ancient inscriptions found upon it could unlock highly controversial truths regarding the reach of ancient civilization that would fly in the face of current academic theory. What is interesting regarding this enormous rock is that it was not only placed where it now lay by natural geologic activities many millennia ago, dropped where it lay on the shores of the Taunton River by the melting of an ancient glacier during the end of the last ice age, measuring 5 feet high, 9.5 feet wide, and 11 feet long, made of gray-brown crystalline sandstone. But no one has been able to say with certainty who first wrote upon the rock, what they wanted to communicate, or why they created these mysterious markings, with it now known to have been the inspiration for over 1,000 books and articles and the basis for over 35 hypotheses. The mystery and indeed debate regarding the writings on the Dighton Rock continue to this day. And a possible motivation for the mystery to remain unsolved is to protect the currently attested academic theories regarding the past of man. Thus, they could quite possibly be markings left by a past, now lost civilization, or one that has long been claimed to have been unable to have had such far-reaching settlements. The antiquity of the writings is undoubtable, as many scientific investigations have proved that they are indeed very old. Yet what is hotly debated is the origins, and indeed the civilization responsible for creating them. Although, predictably, since 1680, when Reverend John Danforth visited the rock, a mainstream academically approved theory regarding the stone has been put forward and popularized by said institutions. However, the fact that the glyphs, or possible language etched upon the rock, has never been deciphered remains. After seeing it, he decided that the carvings on it were made by Native Americans specifically the Wampanoag Indians, after being told the tale of a ship arriving, and a battle between the locals and mysterious newcomers were told to him from long ago in the distant past. Danforth drew the symbols visible on the top half of the petroglyph, and then wrote, quote, It is reported from the tradition of the old Indians that there came a wooden house with men of another country in it, swimming up the river Asinet, that fought the Indians and slew their sachem. Such interpret the figures to be hieroglyphical, the first figure representing a ship without mast and mere rack cast upon the shoals, the second representing a head of land, possibly a cape with a peninsula." End quote. Danforth's drawings were requested by the Royal Society of London in 1732 and are now preserved in the British Museum. This not only proof of their acceptance by mainstream academia, possibly due to its lack of any controversial claims, just a simple mention of newcomers, and no further mention of their possible identity. Yet the fact that these inscriptions remain undecipherable makes the possibility of the newcomers being from a locality nearby illogical, and suggests that they were, instead, created by a group who came from a now lost or possibly concealed advanced civilization. Another hypothesis put forward by Isra Stiles in 1767, while he was the president of Yale College, claimed that the famous seafarers, the Phoenicians, had made their way all the way to North America on at least one voyage. Stiles believed that the writings were left by them to simply show that they were once there. Stiles' idea was a popular one in Europe for some time, and were embraced by Antoine Corte Gebelin, a French scholar, as a possible answer to the identity of their creators. He said that the carvings on the rock should be split into three sections, the past, present, and future. Some of the images he identified were an oracle and butterfly, representing the future, a horse and a beaver meeting, symbolical representations of the two contents interacting in the present, and the divine figures or symbols of Minerva, Telesphore, and Priapus, representative of the past. Yet the mystery of who created the carvings remains to this day. Additionally, the original location of the carvings also remains a mystery. The fact that the boulder has landed where it now lay 
due to geological activities, means it could have originated in a location far away from where it now lay. Was it made by a now lost civilization? Or possibly one that academia continues to claim was not able to travel such vast distances? The mystery surrounding the Dighton Rock continues, and it is undoubtedly one that is highly compelling. During our own in-depth, long-term investigations into the possibility of our small planet, once being home to possibly multiple developed civilizations, each met cataclysm, thus each lost civilizations, as far as mainstream academia would accept, civilizations far more advanced than will ever be academically shared, never even considering the possibility that one was indeed once responsible for the many inexplicably precise yet enormous ancient ruins found all over the world. We recently did an expose regarding the Bazda Caves. Located within Turkey, we covered the many ancient tool marks present within the caves. It was an ideal place for us to launch a pursuit into whether we could identify multiple lost civilizations. We pursued the identification of signature features within and amongst the many enigmatic stone-cut scars left by ancient technologies once used to create these incredible sites. In doing so, we identified a signature within the block building of one specific civilization, whose ruins dot Greece, Egypt, and far beyond, whose signature also present at this circular mound. Discovered by mainstream archaeologists a while ago, yet regardless Greece's culture ministry, warning against overboard speculation that an ancient artificial mound being excavated could contain a royal Macedonian grave or even Alexander the Great, the mainstream awareness of the site, it seems, was successfully suppressed. Regardless, due to our own independent investigations into a civilization who once constructed a number of ruins still unexplained, identifying their signature present at the site, it is unquestionably an ancient structure of a now lost and suppressed civilization. Now known as the Casta Tomb, it was, intriguingly, adorned with a pair of sphinxes whose heads are missing. Alas, we have previously addressed this mass destruction, with many other sphinx heads destroyed, in an effort to suppress Anubis as its true identity and the sphinx's true canine origins. Yet alas, the main stonework is the smoking god. The compounding factors indicating that this site was once built even quite possibly by the great pyramid builders due to the addition of sphinxes, yet it has been successfully stifled from mainstream view. These headless sphinxes, clearly of a canine nature, and as we have previously postulated in regards to the great sphinx of Giza, was in fact once depicted as the head of Anubis and the water erosion theory, a convolution in an effort to hide the fact that the Great Sphinx once rested within a great lake, namely Anubis Lake. Yet I digress. The circular structure within Greece may have indeed once been built by this same once inexplicably advanced ancient civilization, yet alas, any academic study funded by mainstream institutions will never accept or even consider the possibility of any advanced civilization regardless of the precision evident in their stonework, once anywhere as close or even more advanced than us today ever having existed. This advanced yet most likely claimed as Greek ruin may have indeed been used by said characters, as their tombs as claimed. Unfortunately, however, said tomb is also often claimed as their handiwork as well, regardless of the inexplicable features present upon all these sites. Whether claimed as Greek or Roman, the size and indeed precision of some of the blocks often present are far out of their capabilities, yet these mainstream conspiracy theories remain the status quo, regardless of said evidence. It is a system of denial and process, and we think, for good reason, although argued as the burial site of Alexander the Great, the signature features never lie, allowing us, no matter how controversial, to date this relic to a forgotten time within history. It is a debate and a site which we find highly compelling. 
In the first wing of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, close to the Room of the Mummies, one cannot help but be surprised by what you will discover. In a small, inconspicuous display cabinet, an object like no other can be found. Made from a brittle stone known as schist, it is similar in shape to a wheel or discus. This mysterious and to this day unexplained item has become known among particular circles as the tri-lobed disc. It has perplexed all those who have examined it, especially the select Egyptologists that have had the opportunity to study it at great length. Its discoverer is known as one of the most important Egyptologists of the 20th century, author of a classic volume on Egyptology, Archaic Egypt, that continues to be an important bibliographic reference of study even to this day. While carrying out excavations in 1936 within the archaeological zone of Saqqara, Emery discovered the tomb of Prince Sabu. Among several utensils of varying function, the trilobe disc would be found. Emery's attention was immediately drawn to the object, initially defining it in his reports on the First Dynasty tombs as, quote, a container in the form of schist bowl. Years later, he again commented on the subject with a word that perfectly summarized the reality of the situation, indicating to the discomfort the object was causing, describing it as a kachibachi, a small hole that threatens to become bigger and bigger. It seems Emery, like many others within the same field, retained their success and notoriety by deliberately and publicly denying such artifacts any traction within the public domain. Denying us all a true understanding of Egyptian history, or at least a questioning of the currently upheld teachings. He finished his quotation by stating that, A satisfactory explanation has not yet been obtained on the particular design of this object, or indeed its construction. The accepted and predictably rigid view regarding the introduction of the wheel into ancient Egypt coincided with the invasion of the Hyksos at the end of the Medium Empire in 1640 BC, this date being over a thousand years after the disc's construction. Egyptologist Cyril Alred reached the conclusion that the object was, without a doubt, a copy of a previously much older metallic object. A detail next to the orifice in the center also made him suspect that this object was only a small part of a more complex mechanism and that it was saved thanks to a stone reproduction for unknown reasons made by an artist with unknown tools, and the fact that it demonstrates such a complex design at such a primitive time in ancient Egyptian history suggests its origins may have been far more unusual than modern tenants would have you believe. It is highly possible that this artifact is a fragment of one's highly advanced technologies, which have subsequently been lost over the millennia. Regardless of hypothesis, its true function, history, or indeed construction, its reason for existence remains a mystery to this day. Our mission upon our channel is to compile and present enough evidence of the existence of a past, highly capable, technologically advanced ancient civilization that once flourished here upon our planet, that it not only proves their existence beyond reasonable doubt, but vindicates all those who have either lost careers, funding or worse, just for telling the truth. Our intention is to display to the world that a civilization once lived here on our planet that not only mastered the art of stone masonry, but quarried, moved, and built with stones of such gigantic weights, not only do their activities escape modern explanation, but have been deliberately ignored, covered up, and denied by an academia who claim to have all the answers. There are many areas of the planet which still possess many of these compelling artifacts, not only supporting our premise and conviction, but baffle all who try to explain them. And although, predictably, rarely shared by academics the world over, one of these ancient places is known to the modern man as Italy. Seemingly littered with not only polygonal masonry, ancient pyramidal structures, multi-ton lintels and archways, but contains countless other compelling, extremely ancient yet surviving features, 
which not only indicates the existence of this past civilization, but have been investigated by a number of alternative antiquarians throughout the eras, who, after in-depth analysis, have come to predictably startling conclusions in regards to their age and, indeed, possible origins. We have in the past covered a number of these ancient sites, one of which being the Cyclopean Wall, which still surrounds the ancient Acropolis of Alatre, and indeed the astonishing polygonal masonry which makes up the apparently Greek-constructed Necromantion, a place not only proven due to the polygonal architecture to undoubtedly predate this academic explanation, but also, thanks to our own study of the site, has fingerprints left by a tool within the main chamber, said to be the passageway to the underworld of Hades, that we have identified and linked to a number of other unexplained sites found throughout the world. However, this coverage of the Italian relics we have so far explored is but a fragment of what is actually hidden among the winding streets and rolling hills of Italy. Alternative researchers, most notably Giuseppe Lugli, have carried out studies of the unexplained polygonal techniques, which can still be found existing within Italy. The ancient fortifications and polygonal walls, which were researched and initially noted by Giuseppe, include Alatri, Norma, Arpino, Assini, Saracena Gate, Cosa, Alba Fusens, Segni, Pigra, Blera, Lazio, Bomarzo, Latium, San Felice Circio, Latina, Chiusi, Etruria, Toscania, Vitrala, Viterbo, Monte Albano, Sovana, Toscana, Nardo di Pace, Tirna, Lago di Pitiluca, Orvieto, Umbria, Tuscany, Marema, Sorano, Syracuse, Sicily, Val di Saviore, Serviteri, Savignano, and so on. As Richard Cassero puts it, a modern researcher of these enigmatic ruins, quote, The countryside around Rome is littered with relics of a past more or less remote. One feels almost a continuity there between the ancient and the modern world, with the ancient Roman ruins being almost a familiar presence, as if part of the natural landscape. Yet one also finds there remains of a much older and mysterious past. Massive cyclopean walls and circle towns and villages, their stones darkened by the passing of centuries and millennia. One can never get used to them, so strange they are in their interlocking geometries and so different from the familiar contours of Roman and medieval walls. They loom as a relic from an entirely different past, of which we know almost nothing." End quote. And as mentioned, although we have only personally covered the Cyclopean walls surrounding Alatri, similar ancient fortifications can seemingly be found enclosing countless other ancient ruins all over Italy. The small towns of Sutri, Emilia, Pelestrina, Ferentino, Segni, Cesa, Veroli, and Arpino, all in the province of Frosinone, Norba, Cori, and Circe, Cortona, Cuma in the province of Latina, Emilia in nearby Umbria, as far as Ancedonia, Orbitello, and Roselle in Tuscany, and Alba Fucens in Abruzzo, are entirely surrounded by Cyclopean walls surviving to this day in various states of preservation, an indication of a fear these people had of some form of outsider. The stone walls, some of which constructed from truly gigantic blocks, each weighing many tons, are as finely fitted together as the many other mortarless ruins found elsewhere the world over, such as within ancient Peru. But it is their near-impossible acute angles and interlocking corners that caused the greatest of amazement, that just like the polygonal masonry found all over the world, was created as if each stone was individually carved to be a piece of a gigantic jigsaw puzzle. These features, along with their gigantic scale, are relics not only overlooked by the thousands of people who visit Italy each year, but, as we have previously discussed, are overwhelming evidence of an ancient civilization far more capable 
than any of the well-studied ancestors that academia claim as the original builders. These remnants are undoubtedly evidence of a past civilization that were not only vastly more proficient in masonry than even the modern man, but were also obsessed with building enclosed fortifications, as if to avoid some form of outside invader or possible natural threat. Who built ancient Italy? Why did they build with such focus on fortification? How old are these relics? We feel that due to their inexplicable nature, they are undoubtedly relics left by a now lost civilization, yet continue to be ignored by an academia who deny this people's past existence. Regardless of these denials, we find ancient Italy highly compelling. There are many ancient places upon our planet, which we are yet to cover upon our channel. Many intriguing, unexplainable, and thus controversial ancient ruins that, although more than likely discovered and noted by an academic at some point within modern history, has since been banished to selective ignorance deliberately overlooked. This often in favor of retaining one's funding within a certain field of study. Ancient quarries is an area of study that is indeed filled with these ancient anomalies. Seemingly machined stones litter many of the more intriguing locations, one of them undoubtedly Aswan Quarry, not only containing an unfinished obelisk of gigantic proportions, but also seemingly later additions carved as if left by a later advanced civilization. Additionally, the more prehistoric quarries that can be found dotting America's Great Lakes, notably Superior, copper mines and quarries fly in the face of currently attested chronology regarding ancient man. We presume that the most compelling of these sites had indeed since their initial modern rediscovery been widely studied by alternative researchers. However, Cava di Cusa seems to have been largely overlooked regardless of its astonishing ancient relics, which can be found at the site. Located three kilometers south of Campobella di Massara, in the province of Trapani, Italy, the entire quarry, and indeed the length of the ruin, is an astonishing 1.8 kilometers long, located upon a natural ridge spanning from east to west. According to academia, this site was quarried from the beginning of the first half of the 6th century BC. This, regardless of the clearly shifted, mysteriously abandoned, gigantic, unexplainable megaliths which still litter the site. We feel, with such unexplainably large stones seemingly left in situ at the site, like many other unexplained sites that can be found on Earth, were built by an advanced ancient civilization capable of building with such enormous stones. The quarry was abandoned in 409 BC, when it was captured by the Carthaginians. Regardless of academia's limited opinions regarding the quarry, we feel the most interesting and possibly most controversial anomalies to unravel are the abandoned cuts still at the site. Just what were these ancient people making? Why did they abandon these curious megaliths where they lay today? How were they able to shift such enormous stones? We feel there is strong evidence to suggest that Cava de Cusa was an ancient quarry once used and mysteriously abandoned by a lost civilization once capable of shifting unimaginably enormous stones and, as such, is highly compelling. Many of the words which we use in the modern day are derived from far more ancient sources than most would imagine. Many of the words that we use for objects and activities, which have been around since time immemorial, have their named origins placed near the birth of some of the earliest civilizations to have ever walked upon our planet. As such, if beings such as giants did once exist on Earth, one would not only expect to find enormous unexplained ruins, but also these lexical inspirations given to the activities undertaken by these huge people. Is it then just a mere coincidence that ancient enormous stone walls are often named Cyclopean, 
Cyclops, having once been an ancient one-eyed giant within ancient Greek and Roman mythology. Is it also but a mere coincidence that the giant found within biblical stories named Goliath was also a one-eyed beast? Was the name given to these enormous ruins a clue to their original builders? A clue left upon spoken language, a remnant far more difficult to erase from history than any physical remains. Found everywhere on Earth, and even dotting some of the most remote tropical islands, these Cyclopean ruins still perplex us to this day. Many of the ancient Cyclopean ruins that can be found within developed areas have often been draped with modern architecture. Many suspect that this is often done in an attempt to conceal the true nature of these sites. Italy is a particularly good example of a country drenched in Cyclopean architecture, yet chooses to overlook such wonders in favor of modern development. Scattered throughout ancient Latinium, and yet again, coincidentally, placed at the location of a later flourishing civilization, and actually the first real modern world superpower, Rome, are ruins undoubtedly left by an as yet not publicly disclosed or studied branch of ancient beings who were capable of feats we are yet to unravel. Many classical writers and historians, including Homer, Hesiod, Plutarch, Thuclides, and Diodorus Siculus, among others, posited the idea that the Cyclopean ruins of Italy and others within Europe were erected by this now extinct Cyclopean race. And we seemingly continue to carry this torch. For, to heavily research, not only these particular areas of ancient architecture, but the many individuals who have made remarkable discoveries over the years, along with reels of newspaper archives with an interest in these particular finds, and also the suspected individuals tasked with the possible concealment of such. The proposition of an unknown ancient race of controversial beings, possibly much larger than modern humans, having once existed on our planet, has become overwhelming. Why are ancient ruins, seemingly built by a race of giants, actually named after giants? A name with origins placed far within our distant past. Did an ancient race of giants once build the countless unexplained ruins found on virtually every continent? We find the evidence within some areas to suggest such overwhelming. Many civilizations have been and gone here upon our planet. Yet thanks to the time within history in which certain civilizations flourished, countless artifacts and historical studies can and have been undertaken into their existence. We are able to decipher their daily lives, their religious beliefs and practices, even their languages. However, in doing so, we have never been able to decode any knowledge or explanation for the countless, seemingly impossible ancient feats lost abilities of stonemasonry, no documentation found within any hieroglyph, literature, parchment, or other ancient text. Yet pyramids, polygonal masonry, multi-thousand-ton megaliths, along with countless other curious, clear signatures of a lost civilization's work exists. And due to this mystery regarding how these sites were created, we have to presume that those who constructed them were placed at a far earlier time within history, one that was prior to a global flood, possibly the aftermath of a near-extinction-level event, manifesting as a form of global amnesia and severing connections between continents, possibly for 10,000 years. Segesta within Sicily not only looks the same age as that of the foundation walls of Baalbek, and indeed the gargantuan megaliths found within the Trilithon, but the enormous temple is still standing along with its amphitheater, which, if we look to the still surviving polygonal stage flooring present at the theater within Delphi, a site we have covered in the past, one which is also littered with polygonal walls. 
we find more support for the theory that these amphitheaters, with their incredible acoustics, are also remnants left by this same lost civilization. Yet we feel the smoking gun are the protuberances which are still visible within its foundation blocks. It is of no surprise to us that its origins are hotly contested, with many academic teams concluding that it was merely the work of traveling Trojans, this regardless of the multi-ton columns that were so perfectly laid they all still stand to this day. When one considers that protuberances are found on polygonal masonry all around the world, and that modern stone masons are now exploring interlocking blocks, with some such as large Lego blocks already in mass production, it is no surprise that while many claim it to be Greek, others claim it not. This will not cease anytime soon. Many religious beliefs have gained traction in regard to its original purpose. Thus, conveniently, there is little chance that this contention will move forward. Who built the ruins of Segesta? When did they build them? We find the possibilities highly compelling.